Picks and bans for Samsung versus CJ Antis. Here we go. LeBlanc ban against Coco, but yeah, do you, uh, the LeBlanc ban, it's, it's just a good general ban, of course, but do you feel like it's a little bit tough to target ban Coco right now? I feel like it's hard. Yeah, but LeBlanc is such a good champion and all-rounder that I think yeah. you just want to take it out of the pool as fast as possible. Annie removed up against Mad Life and Nidalee, actually, a bit of a surprise, considering that is one of Ambition's go-to junglers at this point. These are the only two teams in Korea that play Nidalee jungle. Yeah, which means it could very well be a first pick for EVE, too, especially against CJ, so... Uh, there's probably going to be enough open here that you don't want to give that out. And in a way, it forces CJ to ban Rek'Sai as well. Yeah, it does. There's a Rumble ban, so interesting. Another champion you'd think that you would want on uh, your side. because Especially because Kuve's Rumble has not been that great. Yeah, looks like they don't want to pick Rek'Sai at all. Yeah. Instead, maybe saving up for a Kalista pick right here or, if CJ doesn't ban it. Or a Sejuani. <laughs> Yep. Apparently tonight everybody wants to pick Sej Sejuani. So. Well, they're going to get Callista or Sejuani right now. Looks that way. But that means that CJ will also get Callista or Sejuani. Well, Maybe. depends on what they ban. What's it going to be? Kennen. Huh. Okay. All right. Kuve has been playing uh, quite a bit of Kennen in solo queue. That is true. So maybe a little bit worried about that. Wow. First pick Lulu right here. I would think this means that they're going to be going mid lane Lulu because that has been one of Bliss's only oh stable champions. Boy. And they gave away Maokai. And Sejuani. Wow. I mean, Shy has been great on Lulu, but that is a lot to give up to CJ. Especially that Maokai, I think. Not having Kuve on Maokai has traditionally been very, very bad for Samsung. Yeah, tough, tough for sure. And Shy has been so good on these top lane tanks as well. Yeah. So heavy engage already picked up for CJ. Samsung has to do something with this Lulu pick, but I, I just don't know what it is. I think top lane Lulu is fine right now, but when you put it mid lane, due to the prevalence of tanks and top, you really don't have a lot of damage left on a team comp. Bring in the singed, yes. Make it happen. You know, between singed and Lee Sin, they would have a whole face mask. <laughs> That's right. You're working your way up. Only yeah. just a little bit of nose poking out. They can share. Ooh, Thresh for Wraith, though. Definitely a strong pick for him. And so that confirms that Lulu won't be going to the support role, at least. So what's it going to be from CJ? Probably not going to go ahead and blind pick the mid lane right here, so... Yeah, you definitely want to wait. I mean, Corky's still available. Corky Jana, perhaps. Okay, mid lane Vlad, you know, whatever. Yeah. Ma or, uh, Faker's been playing it in solo queue. It is a thing. We've seen a little bit more Vlad in general. We saw Lilac on IM play it a couple times in the top lane. Didn't work out, but it's been played. Well, you just have so much AoE in this case. Oh, wow, okay. Morg Vlad, they have yeah. great engage. They can really set up for a nice Hemo Plague here. Oh. oh, really? Now play Vlad, do it. It's actually good say, right here. The Malzahar would be very interesting, but yeah, I think the Vlad is going to be what's going to be locked in, and it will be. Nice. All Vlad right. and Morgana. So, like I said, Faker has been playing a lot of Vlad in the upper echelons of Challenger in solo queue, and we will see it again. And with that Ghost, he's got great engage, has that sustained damage, and there's so much engage potential. And AOE CC that you could really set up. You could run a big, big AD carry right here as well if you want. Uh, maybe Kogma actually. Yeah, possibly. I don't think we're going to see the Varus picked up for uh, Samsung, but yeah, they may want to take that Kogma away. They I think do they have see the, the Kogma coming, yep. and it's really going to be difficult to deal with Kogma when there's so much peel and so many threats on CJ. I think if you give Kuve a job like keep Kogma alive, that would be fine. Can't pick Bard quite yet. Not till next week, unfortunately. Yeah, players not allowed to do that for a week yet. Yeah, if only, man. But it doesn't really sound like people want to play him, sadly. All right, so. Okay, so, so it's, it's going to be, be Jarvan top. Yeah, and it will be a mid Lulu then, I would imagine. Or could you run Jarvan mid against this uh, Vlad, actually? That's a good point. Yeah, you, I think you, you probably could. could. Yeah. I think Lulu's going to stay in top lane. Would you trust Kuve on uh, Jarvan? I think it's going to be 
It's going to be top Lulu. It's just because we've seen so much Lulu out of Bliss that he would more I, naturally come to that conclusion. So what is, the AD, agree. what is the AD carry going to be here for space? Could pick Sivir. Sivir is also another acceptable choice right here. Gives you yeah. even more engage. What about something like Lucian? Yeah, it'd be okay. I think Sivir, Sivir would be better here, though, because you're going to be guaranteed a lot of Ricochet autos. What the what? He's turning into Wung. Oh my gosh, he's going full Wung. He did, well, he hasn't had enough Ezreal games where he's uh, flashing into the enemy team. I don't think it's actually going to be. It is going to be Urgot. Wow, never mind. <laughs> All right, so this is the second time today that we've seen uh, AD carry Urgot. And keep in mind, guys, that CJ needs to win this match. Or well, if they win this match, they lock in playoffs, too. Well, they have a lot of choices. They could win. Yeah any one of their next three matches this, this one this is their best opportunity though that is correct this would on paper seem to be their best opportunity but uh, korea seems to have decided that uh, ergot is a good ad carry now well i mean if you can here's the thing about ergot so in this composition if you're going to play juggerma right yeah kogma wants to be at the front you know what happens when kogma's at the front against ergot he gets suppressed his and then killed. His position is reversed. His position is reversed and he dies. Yep. So actually, as far as dealing with Kogma and Juggernaut comps are concerned, I think this is genuinely a pretty good answer. Yeah, it's a very tanky comp in general too, so the poke is not going to be as much of a worry. And uh, honestly, with Jarvan on the other side, who's Jarvan going to jump onto in this comp? It's, it's not looking good for any sort of Jarvan engage. Yeah, and we'll see. It'll be a full AD Jarvan as well, more than likely. Otherwise, yeah. Samsung doesn't have any damage. And it will be mid against that Vladimir, so we'll see how this matchup goes. Obviously, True. Vlad can't get out of Cataclysm. He can just pull inside of it and wait well, to come back up. We'll see what happens. Time to get the game. Here we are, guys. Welcome again to Summoner's Rift Samsung versus CJ. And I got to say, I think with 5.5 and 5.6 coming up, we are in for a, a really cool time in competitive League of Legends. It yeah. seems like there's a many, many more options than there usually are. That's like to, awesome. Yeah, I'd like to see the Lee Sin still. We'll see how he does. <laughs> Lee Sin will always be played. <laughs> well, At Lee least Sin. in Korea. Whoa, oh, Fury okay. gets locked with that Dark Bind. He gets out on the Lantern, but had to burn the Summoner heal. Incredible that he didn't use that flash. Yeah, but now they started Lantern in bottom lane, which is yeah. really not good. Well, do you swap right now? Do you, you swap for a little bit? I think maybe you uh, you have to. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you do. Especially if CJ takes Gromp here. That could be quite bad, but it looks like the jungle pathing starting on the opposite side for CJ Entis, so they won't have that support from the jungler, and they're just going to do the normal Maokai thing these days and check the Raptor Pit. Yep. Now the question is, will they give Vlad the XP boost or will they give it to Shy? They've been liking giving Shy uh, on Maokai that XP boost in their, a lot of their previous games, but we'll see what happens. Uh, looks like they're going to give it to Vlad. This should mean Vlad starts with Tides of Blood though. Okay. Instead of his Q. Let's see what happens. Well, if he hits a fast level two, it's not the biggest deal, is it? I don't know if can auto them. Okay, oh, okay. So he does start with the skill. Ah, that's true. I suppose you can auto those down pretty easily, can't, can't you? Interesting. I always feel like when I look at the Vlad portrait, he's about ready to uh, sing some big musical number, you know? <laughs> it's like he's got his arms open like, the hills are alive. You know, that's what I see <laughs> when I look at Vlad's portrait. Opera singer Vlad. Yep. You can see it. You picked oh. musical, the inferior genre. That's okay. <laughs> Should I have gone with Operetta? I am a fan of uh, Pirates of Penzance. A grab onto Space. It's going to take a little bit of damage here, turning onto Fury, and that's a good trade yeah, for space, Samsung. Space and Mad Life didn't go for the Gromp right there, so nope. with the XP bonus, Fury and Wraith actually able to turn that around in, in spite of the W first start. So, a bit tough, but you do need a couple levels into this Urgot before he really gets rolling. You have that Acid Hunter a couple levels in, and then you also have the lock-on due to the corrosive charge. So right. I mean, we saw earlier on, it took two about level three 
before those trades really began in earnest. Oh, that's so and annoying. That is, well, that's a lot of poke too on Coco as well. That's yeah. the nice thing about Jarvan is that you do so much burst damage. Yeah, he's such a lane bully with his passive, giving yeah. that percent HP damage. And of course, Coco just won't be able to sustain against that until he gets four or five levels into his Q. He has to be careful and was offsetting some of that, those mana demands with mana pots and a flask. So and it's also usually very effective to push Vlad in early because he's not the best at farming under turret. He either has to spend his own HP to do it with Tides of Blood, or, uh, I mean, his autos aren't really there, and he yeah, just has a single target on his Q, which yep. is the spell you want to be leveling anyway. So. Well, he also started Boots, too, so he's got an extra little amount of damage to make well, sure he gets that CS. He needed more pots, and also he's thinking maybe he can dodge some of these knockups. That's the idea. Well, of course, blue buff taken by Ambition now after grabbing that red, and we'll see how uh, aggro he wants to be. See if he wants to get in the lane early on with this Sejuani. Generally, you don't, but hey, you've got that knockback. A little knockback if you really want it. Well, Doa, after seeing some of these matches tonight, this may be the end of Juggermaw. Yeah, I... Or God, I really think is a good answer. We'll have to see I how agree. Space plays it out. Well, with the ability to go for such a tanky jungler as well, too, now you can just be too beefy for a Kog'Maw to really do a lot to. Yeah, as long as you get that early game advantage. That is still key, because mm -hmm. a Kog'Maw with the equal items will bust tanks. Mm -hmm. So that is one of his strengths. But like we saw in that last game, you just have enough engage, and a Kog'Maw has a lot of issues. Yep. Cool to see Urgot come back. Eve coming in to make a maybe uh, make a play in the mid lane. At least get a summon or two out. Oh, Coco, there we go, the knockup. Dodged by Coco. Eve is going to come in anyway. Lands a Q. And of course, you can just pull right out of that one. No summoners <laughs> used. Maybe if a knockup had connected, it would have been different. But. You're so cute when you think a gank on Vlad will be successful. Hey, man. <laughs> I've got to build the hype somehow, right? I'm trying. I'm trying here. You know, I'm just distracted because I've never got the whole acid hunter thing for Urgot. Why would anyone want to hunt acid? I want to stay away from acid. That, like, burns through things. How, also, how does he make a spear attracted to acid? I don't know. Maybe it's magnetic acid? Ooh, magnetic acid. It's terrifying. The high iron content. Yeah. Which you think would be just consumed immediately by the acid, but maybe not. Ooh, an early dragon for Dude. Samsung. Yeah. Bush just leaves, straight up leaves Slade for this. Yeah, I guess so. Well, they have bought it pushed in, so. Well, it looks like they did enough damage to uh, Dragon that Eve can finish it off now. This is a really good response by Samsung, actually. It stays up in CS. Yep. Not bad. Had that pressure advantage. Might as well try and snowball it because Jarvan, not going to be doing a lot in the late game, especially if he builds full damage. Yeah. We've seen full damage Jarvan before, and it just. It destroys people. It get, destroys people in the mid game, and then by late game, he cataclysms in and then instantly dies. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and also, who's he going to cataclysm? Maokai, Sejuani, Urgot, Vlad yeah. will just Zonia's or Pool. Right, exactly. Vlad, the, the <laughs> so least, the least Samsung, tanky person. Samsung yeah. really has to snowball this Jarvan, or he is going to do nothing. Well, Space coming back to lane already with his tier, but he also has two long swords, so the damage coming out of him is still going to be pretty scary for a Kog'Maw with only Phage, too. So the the lead is probably not going to be coming from the bottom lane anytime soon. Well, Coco also with his Hex tech in the yeah. mid lane, but we do see he's got a the Hex Drinker, the Hex tech Drinker. Oh, it's going to drink the tech out of. The gun? What the hell is hex tech anyway? Six tech? Well, it's no, it's like hex like magic. Is or, it? Yeah, it's supposed to be, yeah. Oh, Eve going deep onto Coco here. Man, just to safeguard his way out. Bliss coming in, gets a knock up on the ambition. Cataclysm back in, there's a flash. Can they get him? They can. First blood oh. going to Bliss in the mid lane. That is so bad. Oh boy. For yep. CJ, because getting this Jarvan more ahead. Coco, this is a matchup that has a real threat of Blizz just straight up all in in Coco at any given point in time. Well, especially with that Hex Drinker, man. Yeah, he's going to go for Brutalizer after this probably too. So yep. this is super dangerous for Coco, even though he is getting to that point in the game where he can stay sustained pretty well. And 
Eves Lee Sin going to be doing some damage also. So this is a pretty all-in strategy from Samsung. I'll be interested to see if it pays off for them. Well, it's a good strategy for Samsung as well, too. I mean, this is their strength right now. They are a very aggressive, solo queue-esque, all-in kind of team. And you need to get the lead early against a team like CJ. Dark Binding on the Fury for a little bit of damage from Mad Life. So I think it's good. I think it's exactly what they should be playing. A man spaces tanky with those shields. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be very hard to do a lot of damage to him. But they haven't gotten that big bully edge, actually. They've not, yet. not been doing much except for stay even. And now Fury can match poke for poke with the Cogmaw ultimate. So ended up being a relatively passive lane. Yeah. But then again, CJ is just playing for the late game. And I, I have my doubts as to how well Samsung will be able to execute the Juggernaut. I mean, this is a team, Juggernaut requires a lot of skill to execute properly because you, your positioning has to be perfect, your warding on your flanks has to be perfect, or you end up blowing the wild growth on the wrong person. And, you know, Samsung hasn't shown themselves to be the most coordinated team this season. True enough. They need to keep getting kills on the Bliss. They want to really have much of a shot here, I think. Coco has to be really afraid right now. Yep. Indeed. Well, up in the top lane, not a lot going on. A little bit of a CS lead for Kube, but you know you're going to get pushed back by that nit by that uh, not Nidalee, by that Lulu. Yeah. Also, shy. Not too worried. A lot of times we see double Doran's rings and a catalyst in this lane. Yeah. He's not uh, even Lulu needing to do that yeah, though. Doesn't even use his mana on that second Doran's ring, so that means he feels very comfortable so far. Yeah. He has a good shape. Will be Will of the Ancients first? Or Coco? Not getting distracted and building any kind of armor. Okay. Yep. Gotta go for it, right? And well, that was a that was a cataclysm yep. that did nothing. What? Oh, it, it was got a flash. His flash. It <laughs> got a flash. It did nothing for uh, TSM. <laughs> they gained nothing from that uh, from that move in mid lane by well, these two completely unrelated teams. Yeah, it's great to make that trade though because yep. now your jungler can play around the Cataclysm to come back in and this Vlad has to stand next to his turret uh, once Cataclysm comes back up and potentially even before because he doesn't have Ghost either. Yep, saved that one. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> Success. The dragon up in a minute 20 now. Here CJ we go. coming down to the bot lane. Fury and Wraith, they've got to be a little bit worried. There we go. Now they no, they don't see them. There's no Warden try. Dark Binding onto Wraith. Fury gets in anyway. But again, this is all just set up for the Dragon. Probably would have went for it if they had the opportunity. But they get a chance to get some Warding down near the Dragon Dome. Although they really don't do as much as I would think they could. Huh. Well, that's odd. Yeah, they I should have Warded more there. Well, yeah. They, they didn't really have it, I guess. Yeah, no Sightstone yet. Huh. On to Ambition. You can see Eve has decided to delay his enchantment in favor of his Sightstone. While Ambition going right up to the Cinder, Cinder Hulk immediately. Yep. CJ needs some time to scale, though, is the thing. So I'm not entirely confident that they can make a good Dragon play right off the bat, especially with that Vlad Flash down. It's so dangerous. Yeah, very true. Space has been able to get a nice little CS lead in bot lane throughout all this. It's kind of nice. Oh, yeah. Brutalizer after Hex Drinker and another Longsword. Bliss just stacking on the AD and a little bit of armor pen. That's what you do. You yep. just want a one shot. Yep. One shot of Lad. It's <laughs> very effective. And Coco finishes his Woda, but that's not going to help him live like an arm guard would. He didn't want to delay his build any further than he had to already, though. Yep. He's going to have to back it up with good positioning. And so the dragon is alive. CJ trying to get that Rift Scuttler. It looks like they will. Brutally beating the Rift Coward into submission. Doesn't take much. And it's not so, very challenging. No, not really. He isn't called Rift Coward for nothing. Oh, nice. Saving that pink ward, actually. Yeah. And Coco now. Taking a little bit of a move over, seeing if he can help his team out. But yeah, CJ, I think rightfully reluctant to go after this dragon. Oh, they're gonna go now, actually. This is dangerous. Okay. Yep, Fury is still very, very close. All of Samsung really is. Teleports up for both top laners. And CJ is not gonna kill this dragon very fast. 
Madlife's looking for a flash. Yes, he is. And he's going to look for a Dark Binding, too, but not quite hit it. Wraith pushes away CJ for now. Oh, Hemoplague used as Coco gets caught. Oh, gets taken out by Kuve. The teleport coming down. There's a wild growth on the Kuve. Morgan Alt's going to lock him up. Kills on both sides. And will CJ be able to turn onto this dragon? Wow, Fury and Wraith were just not there for that. So I guess so. Even though we did see Vladimir go down, there just wasn't enough follow up as CJ collapsed to one side. All right. Now they have so many zoning tools. I don't think Samsung can do anything about this anymore. No. Should be okay. Dragon, are they going to try to go in? They're going to try to steal it. No, no chance. Eve just getting caught out completely by that dark binding outside the pit. Very nice play by Madlife actually preventing him from coming in. Mid turret takes a lot of damage. They'll be able to save it for now, but it is ready to go down at a moment's notice. Yeah, Coco starting to build into the Zonias. So Samsung, unfortunately for them, do, does lose that dragon. They're not at a very large uh, gold advantage, though. In fact, virtually none. Yep. So this is all going okay for CJ in the end because of Samsung being split up in that situation. All right. Well, CJ needed a break like that. They were in a little bit of a risky situation, and it ended up working out. Yeah, Samsung, I really feel, had a good advantage, though, had Fury and Wraith not been on the opposite side of the Dragon Pit. If they had forced that fight onto Coco, they could have backed it up nicely. Yeah, and Coco's going to be moving towards that arm guard now, and maybe a little bit out of danger here. In a bit. Well, Righteous Glory uh, done onto Shy. That'll be incredibly helpful. Oh, is Bliss actually going for a Last Whisper? Third item. Oh yeah, you want as much armor so pen much, as possible. Yeah. This is this is how you play. Crazy stuff. Wreck your face, Jarvan. So here's Wraith, misses oh. his hook, and then he's they're forced to retreat onto the other side, and this just turns it into a kind of five v three right here in favor of CJ. Kube finds himself all alone. Yep. Four v three rather, and so he goes down quite quickly. Fury and Wraith not pressuring. Probably could have followed up, actually, even after that missed hook. Yep. Righteous Glory done now for Shy. It's a great item to get done fairly quickly onto this Maokai. Yeah, and it looks like it's still going to be a while before Fury has that Trinity Force. Meanwhile, Space already with that Glacial Shroud looking pretty tanky. Yeah, this is... Uh it's a good situation for CJ, certainly. Yeah, nothing. oh, yeah. Arm guard done now for Coco as well, too. Things, the, the period of danger is coming to an end for CJ here. As soon as he gets uh, the Zonia's Hourglass, between Pool and Hourglass, he'll be able to outlive the Cataclysm, and Blizz will just be destroyed during that time period. So yep. that's really the turning point in terms of itemization here. Unless Samsung gets a truly epic lead during that time frame, that's when fights will start to tilt in favor of CJ. So far, so good. Gold dead even, though, between these two teams. Even dragons as well. Yeah, the early frozen heart from space, too, also going to be very, very helpful. Yep. It's a little uh, while off from that. But. Against Jarvan Kog'Maw, because Lulu's just not going to do very much damage. Yeah. Well, he's there to make sure that Fury is alive to do damage, but Fury's had his Trinity Force slowed down by quite a bit. He's down 20 CS to space. And so without even the ability to go even at this point, it's going to be tough. Yeah, and as soon as the Frozen Heart's done on Shy and onto Space, and then you get a an Aegis onto Ambition, there's nothing Samsung can do. Yeah. There simply will not be enough damage. Maybe they can get picks. That's going to have to be their, their uh, hope right here, is to use Thresh and Jarvan to get picks and try and play into more of a 5v4. See, Coco's really stopped taking trade damage in the lane now. Just has no resources, so can continually run Jarvan out of mana. Yep. And has those five levels into the queue. Wow, so Mad Life, he's got to feel pretty at home with an AD carry playing Urgot, huh? Yeah. It's like, I remember the glory days. That's right. This is all just like the long plan for CJ to sort of bring Mad Life back to his former glory. They're like, all right, we have to actually put him with Urgot. We've gotten to that point. 
They've taught space to only arcane shift forward. That's right. It's like uh, he sees your got lock in and the spirit of wound like whispers in his ear, remember, <laughs> remember and awaken, mad life. <laughs> and we'll see if it works. He did get a great dark binding onto Eve in that last dragon fight. So maybe it has, although there was no support Morgana back then. It was all Blitzcrank and stuff like that. I miss Mad Life's Blitzcrank so much. Me too. Me too. If Thresh hadn't been invented, we'd still be seeing Blitzcrank. But then Riot made a better version of Blitzcrank. <laughs> so there we go. It's true. Although. Bl Blitzcrank rework, please. <laughs> you're right. I mean, if you want to carry from support and solo queue, you just. Just play Blitzcrank and you just get grabs. That's what you do. And it is still fun. You can't play Blitzcrank and not have fun. At least I can. I want Blitzcrank's hooks to be even more all in, Doa. I want him to have like reverse <laughs> rocket boosters, like Caitlyn's net that like blow him backwards. Oh, yeah, dude. You should change his speed up just to that. Yeah, reverse rocket boosters. Yeah, they just jet out his front so he just flies backward while he's hooking. Sounds best. good to me. <laughs> I'm fine that with that. That way you can hook people over two walls. That doesn't sound OP at all. I think his W instead of his speed boost should be a jump so he can leap over walls <laughs> and then make grabs. and make, Give it two charges so you can leap back right away. <laughs> and just make the grab last for a while. That sounds good. Well, Frozen Heart done for space just in time. And look at that. As our observer just showed, Bliss sitting on 2,000 gold when Dragon comes up. There's not really much of an excuse for that, is there? He, he has been getting shoved in pretty repeatedly here. He, I think you'd rather take damage on turret than go into this without a last whisper, though, wouldn't you? Uh, as long as you have somebody to back you up, and I here guess. we go. They're going to try it. Play uh, onto space. That's not going to do a whole lot. Huge ult coming in. They knock a few people back, but Ambition with a great engage there. Eve in the back line, just trying to make something happen. Shy zoning everything so well, and here comes the rest of CJ, even with that wild growth. Oh, nice find. That's right, Eve's gonna get caught. Mad Life making the plays, and Shy is gonna chase, flashing in, just to push him, I guess, away from Dragon. Questionable flash there by Shy, if he didn't uh, yeah. have a W to follow up with. Yep. Uh, but Mad Life actually flashed for that bind. No other damage coming in, but they can't kill Coco anymore. Coco easily yeah. able to ride that one out. Now we see the Tiamat done from Bliss. Well, CJ got the kills. They got the dragon. I think that's worth a couple flashes and ults. And they got the double kill on the Coco as well, which is really going to help him build yes. this. Sonya's Hourglass. But yeah, let's take a look at this. This was totally not worth it. You don't flash play the Urgot. Look at that. Look at that ult from Ambition. They Great just walk ultimate. right into it. Flashes it. Does get kicked out, though, before he can land a big uh, flail onto the entire team, but Bliss just can't stand up to the damage coming out of the side. He can't kill Coco fast enough within the... There's a flash right there. Yep. Mad Life starts to get this one shy. Flashes for no reason at the end. Well, I got a little bit over eager, but it was funny seeing that engage on the space, and space like, ha, I'm Urgot, dude. <laughs> Frozen hard Urgot. You're just yep. not going to be able to do much. He started to run away for a second. He's like, wait a second. I'm not taking any damage. Uh, they're trying to push towers now to get themselves back within striking distance in terms of goal. Took out top already. Well, they'll get mid too. So two to zero turret lead for Samsung at least. And that keeps him fairly close in terms of gold. Oh, on to Mad Life with the Cataclysm. A lot of bursts going on. Ambition trying to save him. They'll get Mad Life. Can the rest of CJ come to turn this one around? Ambition getting low as well. The Whimsy, the kick, and he is going to get taken out. That's a double kill now for Bliss. So Samsung answering right back with a turret and two kills. Kube with wow. that TP advantage. Just CJ not respecting the fact that that jungle is now heavily warded and he had a chance to go in there. And yeah. Bliss finding really the only target he could get in that circumstance, which was Mad Life. Mad Life's flash was down after trying to land that binding. So the mistake from CJ actually coming back to haunt them right there, over committing with flashes. True. And getting a double onto Bliss. I mean, you just don't need him getting more money. He's gonna get Last Whisper now. And yikes. Well, Shy was able to actually push that top turret down, so that's good for CJ. And you'd have to imagine Bliss killing those jungle camps is going to be yeah, making himself very close to Last Whisper. By getting the team out, I think that did slow it down a little bit. But should be able to afford it soon. 525 damage go. right now on the Cataclysm. Wow. With all that armor pen as well. 
and then able to do the AOE once he's in there. There's Last Whisper. Oh boy, he's doing a lot of damage. He's the guy you don't want three kills on right now. Yeah, seriously. At least in this mid game. Obviously, late game, it'd be better to have him on Fury, but this is where Samsung may be able to do something again, thanks to that double. Yep. I mean, CJ's going to need to make sure that they land the uh, CC onto Bliss right away in teamfights. Oh, I have so much of it. I don't think it's actually going to be that hard. Well, that's why I'm not too worried about CJ right now, too, because, no. you know, Bliss You may, really shouldn't be. Well, you, you know, Bliss may do a lot of damage, but he's so fragile as well. He's going to get And if Space has up. fast fingers, he can just get Jarvan instantly. Yeah. Whoa. Here he was right there. I like how Korean Thresh kind of awkwardly pants after he throws his hook. I know, right? <laughs> He's like, oh, that was so hard. I'm out of breath even though I don't have lungs or breathe. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that, Riot? I don't I He has know. no lungs. Well, I'll blame Riot Korea for that one, man. They're the ones who did the voiceovers for it. Riot, please. That doesn't make any sense at all. Rido, please. Maybe he has ghost lungs. Ghost lungs? Why would you want lungs as a ghost? <laughs> well, maybe, I mean, if you're a poltergeist, you need some lungs <laughs> to make a lot of noise. But then again, I mean, most poltergeists just, like, push stuff off of shelves, right? But then it ends up being the dude. Oh, I almost spoiled a popular movie right now. Has it been out long enough, you think? I mean, I watched it on a plane coming back from IEM, <laughs> so I feel like that means it's been out long enough. <laughs> I'll wait. I'll wait, because it's a good movie. All right. I'm glad you convinced yourself. All right. That was <laughs> that was Doa's internal-external dialogue. <laughs> it's my favorite part of Doa. Right. You hear a lot of it, don't it's, you? It's when your internal monologue inexplicably <laughs> spills into the outside realm. I don't, I don't know if you could say inexplicably. <laughs> I think you could say expectantly. <laughs> Well, I don't know the uh, the reason as to why it does, as in it's unexplainable. Because it's <laughs> something everybody around me wants to hear, obviously. <laughs> obviously. It's the best part of my day. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm glad I could I'm glad I could brighten that right up for you. I'll drag it up in a minute now for CJ, and uh, they've got a pretty good position, although they don't have a lot of vision around there yet. But now's the time to take that vision advantage back. We'll see if they can. Waiting to see if maybe a play is going to be made on Coco, but it is not. No, they're happy just to sit and wait in the brush. Landing. Oh, oh, Kuve gets caught. Ambition coming over the wall. A lot of damage on him. Teleport coming down for CJ as well. They get the kill on the Kuve. Fury doing some decent amount of damage. Oh, CJ may need to be careful. Oh, going deep for another one on to Wraith. And CJ, they're going to follow it up. I feel like they could just back off, but no, they want more. Meanwhile, Coco gets blown up as Ambition tries to zone out Bliss are going to be able to do it. CJ with more kills. And man, really knowing their limits well there. Looks scary for a moment, but three kills, no deaths. Should be an easy dragon as well after that turret. Well, see if they're too low actually to deal with that. They could get poked by Kogma. It looks like yeah. Ambition will be recalling. They can always go for that fight again in another couple of minutes once their ults are so. back up. Coco's lucky he didn't get hit by the uh, ult from Fury there a moment. Yeah, but without, without Bliss being there, Bliss all the way down in the bottom lane. They were able to turn that around. Let's take a look at this again. So Bliss walking back to lane right now. Really good land of the bind. Chaining of the CC. And Space swaps in, but he's so tanky at this point. Even though he gets kicked right back into the action, they can't quite deal with him. Wraith gets wrapped up with a twisted advance, and then they push forward. Coco, I think, wasted his pool a little bit right here because yep. he did allow well, Bliss uh, to walk up, and he had to flash. Meanwhile, a game for Ants is going on. There we go. Now we get to see it on the big screen. It looks wow, like Dragon was Eve stolen by Eve. Wow. I guess we'll have to see a replay of that one because of the replay that prevented us from seeing it. We'll just only watch replays for the rest of the game. I, okay. I guess so. Ten second delay. <laughs> and here we go. There's a replay of what was stopped by the so previous Fury replay. and Eve were down there. Ambition wasn't quite there yet, so he uh, does manage to finish it off. And then oop. Oh, nice. kick Ambition kick. into the rest of CJ. Yeah, well, that evens up the Dragons, so not the biggest concern for uh, CJ. Really there, they still enjoy a 3K gold lead, and they're even on turrets. And again. Wow, Hydra. Bliss really going hard in this build. I didn't expect him to actually finish that item. Well, doing it before he even finishes his boots, too. And CJ has the right idea here. Just have him split push against space. He can't all in space yep. with a frozen heart. And space is 
ultimate available for you. So, well, he's got that uh, Manamune as well now, or Muramana. So the damage is actually starting to be pretty decent for space. Yeah, going for that standard Urgot build moving into a last whisper. Just yeah. wants to spam his Acid Hunter. Well, again, I mean, you look at CJ and they, you just look at the items they have and you wonder how this Kog'Maw is going to do much damage to this team at this point. Oh, yeah. I mean, does it, he bought a QSS before finishing his Blade of the Ruin King. He yeah. is doing nothing right now. But what are his choices? There's so yep. much crowd control, and he has to be really concerned about... <laughs> oh, Dark Binding, Mad Life. Maybe you do want to stick him with Urgot. It really does seem to be bringing back the plays <laughs> that we saw so much of a couple years ago. Well, they have to do something, though, True enough. against Bliss. Well, he's done a lot of damage in that bottom lane. They're just going to send Shy down to take care of this. Looks like that'll be able to save that turret. Righteous Glory used right there. Yep. Wanting to make sure that turret took no more damage than it needed to. He is really annoying to deal with this Jarvan, but at the same time... Well, there's a grab. And it does nothing. Split pushing without TP can be dangerous, Shy. And Whoa, okay, <laughs> that was interesting. Huh. Change places. Yeah. <laughs> That's the uh, quicker version of the position reverser, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> All right, well, more pushes up that mid lane now in uh, Samsung's favor for the moment. Space is like, sure, I'll take more farm. Why not? It's not like we want to give it all to Sijuani. <laughs> Who does that? No, no more farming Sijuani inside lane. And the battle continues. <laughs> High damage versus high tankiness. Yep. Is We're living the high life. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. There we don't go. Yeah, a little bit of a slow, but. Had to use no, the QSS, use. though, in order to get oh, out yeah, of Oh, yeah, you're right. There's such a danger of that CC chaining, so. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's oh. better safe than sorry. I mean, there's no objectives uh, you really need to worry too much about right now, so. QSS the relative short cooldown, also. So. Yep. CJ just, just has to get people in a choke, draw them out away from these turrets, and they should be able to finish. Yeah, I mean, they can start to really threaten Baron right now. I mean, this is annoying by Samsung, but it's still really unlikely that this is actually going to work, especially now that they see Bliss joining up with the rest of the team. Yeah, I think you can still feel very comfortable with CJ in this situation. There's a reason why Lane Jarvin isn't meta. Yep. Sure enough, we still see it every once in a while. Wow, Mob Melmordius. Going hard. <laughs> yep. Wow. That's that's commitment right there. That is. I something. admire I admire Bliss for his commitment. <laughs> hey man, I mean if you're gonna play mid Jarvan, you might as well play the, the middest Jarvan of them all. <laughs> his minions are like, oh no, he's got Mob Melmordius. Wow, he does clear waves extremely quickly, though. It is nice. I mean, it does put a certain amount of split pushing pressure on the CJ. They can deal with it, but it just comes so fast. Yeah, but it also, it's also how long until CJ just starts Baron and yeah. then teleports up there with Valkai and takes Baron and then shoves in their base. So yeah, exactly, yeah. It's You just have to hold out long enough for it not to matter. CJ can get control of Baron and start playing that game right now, in fact. I'm kind of surprised they haven't already. Yeah, they, they really don't have to be waiting for a dragon in order to force the issue. I mean, for years, though, if you would be at this point in the game and ask CJ, if you could pause the game and be like, would you guys rather team fight or take Baron? CJ is always going to be like, no, nah, we'd, we'd rather team fight. <laughs> this is how CJ's always been. Bye, Fury. Unless it's CJ Blaze. <laughs> but CJ Frost, which I... Then they would just say, nah, we'd rather just split push and farm forever. Yeah. I feel like this team executes more like Frost and Blaze. Maybe that's just me. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. Well, Baron being taken by CJ now. Eve running around really fast with that Lulu. It's getting low. Can Eve steal this Baron? It could be big. CJ turning around. Mad Life popping the ult onto Kube. CJ's just going to turn. Nice knockout by Bliss. He's going to come in with the Cataclysm as well. Wraith grabs Shy. Not the target you want in Urgot. 
starting to get those kills. He's tanky. Coco in the back lines, zoning out Fury very nicely. And CJ with a pretty controlled team fight. Double kill now for Space, and they can turn potentially back on his Baron. They're a little bit low, though, yeah, so I think go they're going to... Yeah, I think it's going to be safer to do that dragon. Just go to dragon and then fight Baron again in just yeah. a couple of minutes. That Three was for one. Even with a great knockup and cataclysm from Bliss, it just wasn't enough. Yeah, well, Coco did such a great job of keeping Fury completely out of that fight, and if he hadn't have been able to do that, I think that could have gone Samsung's way. So, easy dragon in the end. For CJ on top of winning that. They may go oh on boy. Fury right now. And yeah. That's... Turning on to that one, Lulu keeping him alive, but CJ chasing. They still got the dragon anyway, and rather than go too far, this is what makes a good team. You just pull back, you got the objective you were looking for. Yeah, go back, buy right now. Yep. So let's watch that again. They catch Kube right away. Kube actually, oh, look at that. That is a, such a good knockup and ultimate. But you can see how fast Bliss goes down right here, and then the tankiness just too much to deal with. There is no follow-up damage from even Wraith. Meanwhile, Coco is just keeping Kogma occupied on the side, so there's yeah. no way he can actually contribute to that fight. Doesn't matter if Coco dies, he did his job. Yep, he did it very well. So now Last Whisper done for a space. Oh, and he also has a giant spell too, so good it's luck killing him. time for the him. Randuins. Yep, I think so. Good luck killing him. You swap and pop the Randuins. Yeah, or you could go for uh, Warmogs. Nah, you just need armor. All right. Just need a little bit of armor. See, I was thinking that this if you got Warmogs, this would inspire Mad Life even more and take him back to that period of League of Legends where he was oh so good. See, the problem with Warmogs here against Kog'Maw is that if you have HP with no armor or MR, yeah. you're just going to not be very efficient against his uh, percent HP damage. Right. Which is why I was saying you pick it up for psychological reasons for Mad Life. <laughs> There's no real in-game reason to do it. It's, it's all about reawakening the Mad Life within. I think we need to run some sort of occult ritual in order to do that. I think so, too. Maybe. Could we, we, we sacrifice Loco Doco to, uh, to do that or something? I mean, he was already sacrificed, Dan. <laughs> That's true, I suppose. Shy in a little bit of trouble. Bliss on top of him. And uh, Bliss, you know, will, I suppose, win this fight eventually against Shy. Meanwhile, CJ's like, oh, our top laner's in trouble. Quick operation. Save Private Shy. And oh, he dodges a knockup. Just advance onto the Rift Scuttler. What's going to happen? Meanwhile, a fight in the mid lane. Coco with a kill. And so, while they go into Shy, yeah, you killed Maokai, but you lost your top laner and your support for it. And you lost any sort of pressure you had in the mid lane or over Baron. And oh now boy. only very squishy champions remain right here. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Oh, Ambition. Oh. Eve coming in. And they're going to pull back. They're like, all right, it's time to fight. Near the Bliss Baron has no Bliss. cataclysm. Bliss is walking right in. Yeah, but a lot of damage onto space, and that is a kill for Bliss. Coco on the run, too. What is going on here? Fury able to just rain down ultimates. This is a bit of a silly game at this point. I mean, Jarvan does a lot of damage in isolation so. like that. Uh, sure enough. Fury has no mana right here. This is uh, a bit of a desperation. Yeah, but they need TP's to do this. TP's up in five seconds. This is a good decision, though, by by Samsung. They need to do something like this to stay in the game. TP, and TP, TP. You know what? They're going to get it. No CJ's TP. not going to get there in time. Yeah, they get the Baron. CJ not even trying to contest that one without space. OK. OK. Interesting stuff. Uh, Coco was there on the side. Yeah, he didn't have exactly full HP or anything at the time, but giving up that Baron. And yeah, CJ could have taken that trade evenly, just giving up Maokai and then taking the two kills for it, but instead decided to stick around and do yeah. a bit more damage to Samsung. They've, you know, they've been kind of chasing a bit far this game, and it really hasn't been punished yet until that fight. And, and Samsung, to their credit, really did punish it very hard. That's right. It's time for Black Cleaver. That's right. You need a Black Cleaver. Forget that Randuin's. Black Cleaver is the way to go. Space. I do think Ambition or should Bliss. have gotten a an Aegis before, mm. and then a Locket before picking up the the uh, Thornmail. Mm. 
Because you're not looking at sustained damage from Bliss, you're looking at burst, and it's not it's mostly not going to be autos. Yeah, true. So when you're talking about Lulu and the magic damage from Kogma, I think that's going to be a better pickup. And you can also just use the locket for the burst coming in from Bliss too, so not too thrilled with that itemization. Obviously he is concerned with getting autoed by Cog, but theoretically Cog should be swapped and dead. That's the, that's the idea, but he really hasn't gotten close enough to do that yet. Well, Shy, back for more. Yep. No, I mean, Blissey's 5 3 and 2. It's been, as far as mid Jarvan games go, it's been pretty good. Yeah, just <laughs> He's great in these skirmishes. Yeah. If he has five people focusing on him, he is awful. And even with, as we can see, even with this Baron buff right now, Samsung just not really doing much, not yeah, able that, to do much. That's a good point. Because they're, they're in a very awkward situation right now with the Juggermaw. Bliss can only split push and skirmish, but you're playing a, a composition that requires five people to deal with Kog'Maw. So what do you do right here? It's, it's really an awkward way to play out this game. Because if you start sieging as Kog'Maw, and they engage on you with Righteous Glory and a, uh, and a, an ultimate from Sejuani. Yeah, that's a good point. How do you play against that? You don't. Kogma just dies because you don't have enough peel or additional damage threats. So the fact that they've kind of itemized themselves into a corner here is awkward. <laughs> well, CJ certainly has the capacity to make some mistakes, so we'll see what happens. I mean, they can run around like this with Kogma. Oh, they're going to go into his advance onto Fury. Going to try to protect oh, him. Nice, nice Sejuani ultimate right after the QSS as well, too. Prevents CJ from coming in for a moment. Fury with a big knockup, and CJ gets the Kogma. And now turning in, Coco still relatively untouched. Wraith takes a huge amount of damage. Oh, man. Coco just destroying this Thresh here. And he's like, yeah, I'll take blue. CJ will take Dragon as well out of that. So catching Fury, Ambition's ultimate coming in right after... This QSS was used by Fury. Could not prevent that one. Yep. And that's, that's exactly right. I mean, it's pretty easy to get in onto Fury like that, even though Eve hit a monster kick right there Yeah. in well, order to peel for him. What do you think about Wraith going for the locket rather than going for a Crucible? Oh, space getting caught. Gonna have to flash out of that one. Time to kite. Kite like your life depends on it, because it does. Oh, Q didn't land. That was really close. Wow. Jordan does so much damage. I know, it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> he's got Merc Trust no, now. Oh, he's going what? giant spell. Oh, where's you the wimp, Bliss. Where's the infinity edge, Bliss? Come on. Yeah, what a wimp. Where's <laughs> the blood bloodthirster? So yeah. you have the shield. That's your defensive item, buddy. Where's your static shiv, man? You need that crit now. Well, I, I suppose IE would give you that too. Yeah, I think the uh, I think the bloodthirster actually may be the best item right there. But well, you can tell him that after this game, if you can say it in Korean. <laughs> well, Baron gone now, so that'll be a bit of a relief for CJ. They have the four dragons, and they could just go ahead, push this up, end the game, calm fashion. True enough. Calm fashion that we will probably not actually see. You know, they just have to have that patience for the next team fight. And as opposed to the locket juxtaposed with uh, the crucible, I mean, yeah. locket is really good here against the magic damage from CJ, so I understand why you would pick that up. And, but yeah, having a second cleanse may be useful at this point. When's the last time you saw two black cleavers in the same game? <laughs> it's been a while, sir. Like 2012, It's perhaps? been a while. 2013? It's, it's been a while. It has. They've caught a, this game has caught a, a bit of the cleaver fever. I like it, though. Yep. All right, Space is doing it. He got the Iron Elixir on Urgot. That's what I wanted last nice. game from Prey. Unfortunately, we don't have the Lulu to make him even bigger this time around. There's always, there's always something preventing me from getting what I want to. So I suppose it's true. Usually it's just KT losing. <laughs> but they won today, so congratulations. 
Oh, turning around, Righteous Glory, they're gonna go on to Fury. Twist advance as well, Fury gets out on the Lantern. CJ though could threaten Baron, 50 cents, or 50 cents, 50, 50 seconds until that's up again on the world. It's time oh, for the great bliss. Jarvan chase. <laughs> that's right, he's into the blue buff pit. They're like, all right, oh. exiled to blue buff. Fury poking from the side. Oh, Coco slowed. Oh, Coco, he's gonna get dunked. He's gonna get blown up a little bit, trying to get out, can't do it. Gets kicked right into a kill for Fury. Wow, that was he didn't awkward. use his pool or his hourglass or right his there. flash. That was odd. Could have just used that pool immediately. Yeah, that was very strange. Baron up in four seconds. That was not a good time for you to forget to use all your actives, Coco. Well, CJ again, we saw them against GE having a, a strong early game, but just falling apart around objectives late. And yeah. And Samsung's played, out this, Samsung's played out this composition really well, too. Oh, as well as you can with kind of an awkward version of the Jugger Maw, but they made it work. And they're going to go for Baron. This seems a bit dangerous, even with Coco down for another 26 seconds. Yeah, Coco's most of their damage, though. Yeah, that is true. But still, you've got that catch potential. Wraith hit by that Dark Binding. Space poking with the Acid Hunter. Baron getting lower. Ambition's going to come in and try to take this one. Can he do it? He steals it. Ambition grabs that Baron away. And CJ just disengaging now. And that's the danger, man. They just gave him the 50-50. All right, sure. Yeah. Ambition will take that any day. Getting in there with the E and then flashing right out. Both players use that smite. Didn't even need to use his ult to try to lock people up. He just walked in, <laughs> took it. He's going to pick up a locket too. You know, though, we wow. uh, check this out right here. See what happens. He just did not oh. get the smite. Just a little bit too early. He actually may have misclicked that. He Well, we saw the Chilling Smite actually go down on Ambition after he yep. came in, and it's hard to tell if, if Eve just did that after Baron was stolen or if he misclicked. It is possible. Right. It was either one. Either way, that is a Baron now for CJ. Awkward. I wonder if uh, Coco was up in time to get that. I didn't see. I'll have to see if we click on him here or uh, see him on our screens. Samsung taking the Rift Scuttler. Dragon is up in a little bit. And did Coco? No, no, he did not get the Baron buff. It was close. Either way, CJ with a really nice opportunity here. Over the wall, they're going to go in. And there's a nice ult on to Wraith and Fury. Fury backing away, but Wraith will get taken down. Meanwhile, Bliss is going to try to jump onto space. There's a nice wild growth onto him. Everybody in the Cataclysm. Bliss going down very quickly, though. Eve having to safeguard out of that one. And Shy, just this super tank. Fury. No more keeping him alive, oh, oh, and he man. gets blown up by Coco. Coco is just doing so much yeah. damage right now. And that's the thing about this composition from Samsung, and a little bit disappointing how CJ played this one out. Because oh, is it over? Yeah. Might be, yeah. Uh, they they grouped. If they just group, Samsung just can't take them in a team fight. They don't have enough damage. Yep. There's too much crowd control from CJ. But CJ wow. found themselves mispositioned, just like they did against the Tigers, but they're still going to be able to close. That yeah, was a bit sloppy, but uh, in the end, a parent steal right into a team fight win, and CJ Entis is going to take this first game with a very interesting composition, but they've handled the Juggermaw quite well. There goes the Nexus. GG, and CJ up a game over Samsung. Yeah. Overall, pretty good game from CJ right there. I like what they did to adjust. Fun to see that full damage Jarvan, but it just can't survive the late game. Yeah. Still, CJ has to be worried. Some of those same blunders that allowed GE to get back into the game were made again tonight. They weren't all on the same page in terms of where they should be positioned before team fights. some risky pathing through their own jungles. Yep. Mad Life, though, with a pretty good game, especially early on, hitting a lot of crucial dark bindings to keep CJ even up against the Samsung team. But uh, all in all, much, much closer game than I thought we would see. But I feel like more than anything, Samsung really played to their strengths as a team. It's limited right now, but they can certainly do the aggression thing pretty well. Yeah, they can. Well, a win for...